us everywhere we go. We're going to continue to worship the Lord with this song called God With Us. of the Lord with these songs. Like a picture that you painted 
I was reading in Romans this week, and I just had to share what God put on my heart. See, Paul had been spending time talking about the Gentiles and how their unbelief and sin would be punished. And then Paul turns very quickly, and he admonishes the Jewish people. And this is what he writes. 
in Romans 2.17. He says, you who call yourselves Jews are relying on God's law, and you boast about your special relationship with him. You know what he wants. You know what is right because you have been taught the law. You are convinced that you are a guide for the blind and a light for the people who are lost in darkness. You think you can instruct the ignorant and teach children the ways of God. For you are certain that God's law gives you complete knowledge and truth. He says, well then, if you teach others, why don't you teach yourself? You tell others not to steal, but do you steal? You say it's wrong to commit adultery, but do you commit adultery? You condemn idolatry, but do you use items stolen from pagan temples? Are you so proud of knowing the law, but dishonor God by breaking it? See, I can't just stand up here and proclaim truth if I'm not willing to walk it out. Paul is saying to the church, the people that know God's word, that know his law, that it's not enough to just know what it says. You got to do what it says. You have to walk it out. You can't just say, I know God's law. Look at me. I'm going to just condemn all of you unspiritual, sinning people. Because that's an easy thing to do. That's a comfortable place to be, to point the finger at other people. And we're really good at that. But what are we doing? What are we walking out? And that convicted my heart because, guys, I have children. I want to teach my children the ways of the Lord. But I can't teach what I don't know, and I can't teach and have them replicate what I'm not. So I have to be able to walk it out. And that doesn't mean I have to be perfect. It doesn't mean that. It means that when I make a mistake, I own up to it. It means I repent before the Lord and I say, God, I am sorry. I have not honored you. Because guess what? We just got done singing. Your promise still stands. And he is faithful. And when you repent before the Lord, he is, he is just in forgiving you. He's righteous in forgiving you. But I'm not going to, I'm, I'm going to make it uncomfortable. There are people in this room that are stealing, that are committing adultery and have idols. And I'm sorry, but it's true. And I hope that today is the day that you break those things off of you, that you repent before the Lord and you say, God, I give you my all. Because I don't want to be someone that just comes to church and acts like I know who you are and here's your word, but I don't walk it out. Because it goes on to say, no wonder the Gentiles blaspheme God. That because of the way the Jews were acting, people that did not know the Lord were like, no wonder I don't believe in the Lord. No wonder. I don't want to walk and live a life that doesn't honor God. And I sure as heck don't want to mislead other people about who my God is because of my behavior. So today is the day, let it be the day that you say, God, I'm sorry. And you turn to the Lord and you walk out and live out what his word says. Can we do that today? Please, please, I'm, I implore you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, God, for the fact that your faithfulness still stands. Your promise is still there for us, God. Just like it was for those Jews back then, God. That, that we can cry out to you, Father. That we can repent of our sins before you and we can walk by faith going forward with the freedom of knowing our past is our past, God, and that you will not call to remembrance the choices of our past, Father. Let us be a good witness by our walk, God. Let it be the choices that we make, the small choices day in and day out, God, that help others understand and see that you are a good and loving Father. God, help us be a good witness. God, put it upon our heart to get into a deeper relationship with you, God. As we are at the beginning of a new year, God, let us have good disciplines, God, good behaviors and good actions. God, that not only deepen our relationship with you, but that show a world that you are real. Father, we thank you for who you are, God. We thank you for the fact that you love us, that you're, that you're just, re you reveal yourself to us in just creation, God, that you're all around us, God, and that we can truly worship the King of kings and Lord of lords today. In your son's name I pray, amen and amen. You guys, you guys can be seated. Well, good morning, good morning. I'm very glad to see everyone here on the first Sunday of 2019. This is the best place you could be on the beginning of a new year and throughout the rest of the year. I, I hope that 
some of you are here because you want to maybe your commitment for this year was to be in church more so that's a great great commitment and i promise you that if you continue in that resolution you will see god move um, as you continue to go closer to him but we do set aside a, um, a, mo a moment every morning on sunday to welcome any first-time guests that we have if you'll just reach right in front of you if this is your first time visiting with us and fill out this connection card put it in the offering bucket as it comes around in a few minutes you have time to fill it out neatly and we just want to begin to connect with you as the body of Christ. We use these to get you in the right Sunday school groups or groups of interest. And we can also um, just know the areas of the community that we're connecting or reaching out to. So likewise, church, any updates or prayer requests, please use this card as well. And you'll just, like I said, put it in the offering bucket when it comes around in a few minutes. So stand up, give someone a good hug. Let them know you're glad they're here today. announcements for you. The ladies Bible study will be starting back on Wednesday, January 9th at 10 a.m. here at the church. That's a really good chance for you to get to know some ladies around you um, and just make some new friends. Also, Recovery to Freedom is Thursday night at 7 p.m. Um, this is for anybody that's wanting to break the chains of our hurts, habits, and hang-ups. I think we can all uh, relate to that. So if you'd like to come to that, it's Thursday at 7 p.m. Um, just right here in the Oasis room, which is just right outside this building. Um, and then men's breakfast is the second Saturday, um, and that's going to be at 8.30 a.m. So men, mark your calendars. I know that'll be a good time. And then I think we have something really exciting this morning. Pastor Marty, do you have some baptisms for us? You ready? So.
Thank you very much, worship team. We're going to carry on with our worship, and uh, we're going to offer up our offerings and tithes to the Lord. Um, I'd like to read, there's nothing more definitive than to lay down God's word. I could, I could speak quite a bit about tithing. It's not a financial thing. The money is just an instrument of God to form a relational situation with our Father. When we give our best to Him, money is important. Jesus said that in the Bible many times. When we offer up our trust, our love, and our finances to the Lord, He will pour out from heaven and bless us. And it happens again and again. It's a cyclical situation, a relationship with God. I'd just like to uh, just read a couple of uh, verses from Malachi. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house. And test me in this. Testing God, that's something. Says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you a blessing until it overflows. Now this it comes on, this gets even better. Then I will rebuke the devourer. The tires on your car are going to last longer. Your engine is going to last longer. Your washing machine is going to last longer. Your health is going to be good. Your children are going to be blessed. These are all the heavenly things he will pour out upon you. So that it may not destroy the fruits of the ground. Nor will your vine in the field cast its grapes, says the Lord of hosts. What a promise. It's here for your taking. Thank you, Father God. Let's just bow our heads over the offering. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love and your care. And we come to you and we give you our very best, Father God. We don't create it, Father God. It's in your word, this relational thing, Father God, of ministering to you, blessing you, thanking you, Father God, and you pour out your wondrous gifts, bountiful gifts from heaven upon us, Father God. We thank you for this situation, Father God, that is bound by your word. In Jesus' name we pray. If they are, I don't know whether they call them stewards or ushers. It's, it's an English thing. If they'd like to come forward and just place the offering buckets on the altar steps. And if you'd like to come forward, please, and just put your offering in the bucket. Thank you very much. What are you turning to wine? Open the eyes of the blind. It's no.
God. Amen. God's good. Amen. Yes. Hey, if you guys could just stay there for a real quick, we're going to play that uh, bridge again. But for those who don't know me, I just want to go ahead and introduce myself. My name is Josh Powell. I'm the student pastor at the church. And uh, just a quick plug in for that. If you're in middle school, you should actually be over in the gym right now. We do our middle school ministry. Uh, right now during service. So just, just a quick plug in. If you're in middle school ministry, we have a great time over there. So uh, if you get a chance, come over and uh, visit us. Uh, but before we get started, and uh, I wanna have them play part of that song again, but uh, just a quick announcement uh, on Pastor Keenan and Pastor Lori's behalf. But just uh, a couple weeks ago, Pastor Keenan, uh, he went into the hospital for those who know, or if you didn't know, and uh, found out that he had a di diverticulitis. And uh, he was doing better, they, they put him on antibiotics, he was in the hospital for a couple of days, they sent him home, uh, he was doing good, and uh, then it flared up again. So uh, he's been in the hospital for a couple of days now, and uh, they've got the medicine in him, he's doing good. Uh, I talked to him yesterday, and um, they, they feel like most of the infection's gone, and uh, he, he's feeling a lot better. But because it's the second time it flared up, uh, their really suggestion is for him to go ahead and get surgery, you know, uh, to get it taken care of. They hate for him to go home and it flare up again and you get septus and all these different things. So, uh, but how many of you believe that he's in God's hands? Yeah. Amen. So, you know, for him and Pastor Keenan and Pastor Lori, they just want us to be in prayer for them. We're gonna pray here in a second. They want us to, to be in prayer. Uh, he loves you guys dearly. I know he wishes he could be here. Uh, but during this time, you know, it's gonna be uh, a couple of weeks of recovery, you know. I, I think it'd be, it'd be good for us, you know, just to keep him in our prayers, especially since we're gonna be fasting anyways. And just give him a little bit of room, a little bit of space to heal. Uh, and that's kind of what they're asking for. Uh, but like I said, he's in God's hand and God's greater and he's bigger than all of this, amen. Why don't everybody go ahead and stand to your feet. Just begin to stretch your hands to heaven right now. We're gonna pray for him right now. Just with your own words, your own voice, just begin to pray. Just begin to thank God that he's in his hands, that God's orchestrated everything. So Father God, Lord, we just come to you in Jesus' name, the name above all names. God, we declare in this place today that you are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and you're sitting on your throne and God, we believe that Pastor Keenan and Pastor Lori are in your hands right now. God, that you are taking care of this situation. God, that you are orchestrating everything that needs to happen. But Father God, Lord, we do come against the enemy right now and everything that he's tried to do. God, for every assignment that's been sent against our pastor, we break it right now in Jesus' name. Spirit of infirmity, we bind you to hell right now. You have no place here. You have no place. We pray that healing would continue to develop and root in his body, God. Father God, we're so thankful, God, that this isn't an emergency surgery, God, that this is something that is scheduled, God, because it shows me that you've put the right people in the right place to take care of our pastor. We pray that you would be with them, give them peace, give them strength. God, even right now, Father, as we feel your presence in this place, I pray that your presence would begin to fill that room. God, fill that place with your presence. Uh, God, we thank you for 
your strength in the recovery. God, they say two weeks, I say one week. God, just complete healing, complete healing. We just declare this in the name of Jesus. Let's sing through this song one more time and let's declare this for our pastor. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And what could stand against? Our God is great. Give the Lord a praise offering. Uh, amen. You may be seated. Oh, God's good. Amen. amen. Just to uh, make sure I cover all my bases as I was praying, I just remembered, you know, that um, this, like I said, this isn't an emergency surgery because he's feeling good. You know, the, it's healing up, so they're scheduling this, all that. You know, praise God that he was able to heal that. And so now they can go in and really take care of that problem. So God's so good. And uh, I'm just thankful for who he is. Amen. Amen. All right, well, we're going we're gonna to jump into this word this morning. And uh, I believe that God has something for us. Uh, Pastor Keenan last week started ministering on fasting. Uh, today is our first day of our corporate 21-day fast. If, if you missed that last week or maybe you forgot on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> but today is our first day of this. So uh, we're going we're gonna to talk about some fasting today. We're going to talk about some practical things in the Bible, uh, some, some tips for you guys. But more than that, I really believe that God has a very specific word for us. Uh, when we get into the end of this message, God's wanting to do something powerful in, in all of our lives. So, so let's just go ahead and jump into this. And before we get started, I wanted to, I tried to build your faith a little bit uh, when it comes to prayer and fasting and, and what God can do and what God's capable of doing uh, in this. You know, uh, I'm going to talk about some pretty cool things in a little bit, but you know, I can't really 100% pinpoint why prayer and fasting works. All I know is it, is it does. It just, it does. Prayer and fasting works. It's in God's word. He, he's very clear on it. You know, he doesn't say if you fast, he says when you fast. And so it works. It's a, it's a very cool principle in God's word that is powerful and it's effective and it works. But, uh, you know, when me and Rhonda first got married, uh, we, we, Gosh, I don't remember what year it was in our marriage, uh, but we were, this wasn't something our church was doing. We just felt like, man, we, we feel like we we're supposed to fast in January, a, a 21 day fast. So we decided, okay, we're gonna do this. You know, I, I can't say that I was a Christian for a real long time or, or even that uh, I was really experienced in this. All I knew was God said to fast. And sometimes that's all we need to know. Sometimes all we need to know is that God says, this is what you need to do. And then we can begin to see some of the fruit from it. But I knew that God said to fast. So, okay, we're, so we're gonna jump into this thing. We're gonna pray and fast. So we're like, God, what should we fast for? Well, at the time we were living in an apartment and, uh, you know, we, we, that just wasn't where we feel like we we're supposed to be. So we're like, God, you know, financially, there's no way this can happen, but your word says, to pray and fast and, and you can do miracles and wonders. So we're like, we're gonna do this. And so we started praying that God would give us a house. And so we knew that there's no way, but it's really neat because the prayer and fasting prompted us to begin to pray for that. It, then it prompted us to start looking you know, and start to put feet to what we were believing. And so we started looking and, and, you know, sure enough, later that year, God provided for us. God got us into our first home. 
Amen, isn't that cool? And, and, and I feel like it was all through prayer and fasting. Well, then that encouraged us the next year, let's do this again, let's pray and fast for 21 days. And this is where it gets really cool. You know, I think houses are great, but this is where it gets really good. Is we decided, let's do a 21 day fast. And for some reason, I don't know why we prayed this, but we're like, let's, let's do a 21 day fast before we, you know, have kids. I don't know why we did this. <laughs> and uh, no, I love my kids. But the big thing was, is we wanted my mom and dad to know the Lord as their savior. Because Rhonda's parents already knew Jesus as their savior. And, and you know, we still wanted to do our date nights and go out. Well, to do that, you gotta give the kids to somebody else. We wanted to make sure that they were getting God when they were at their grandpa's and papa's house. We wanted to make sure that's what they were getting. So we started off the year, we're like, God, let's pray for this. Let's fast and pray that my mom and dad give their hearts to Jesus before we have kids, right? That's a good prayer. That's a, that's a good thing to pray. And remember, I'm trying to build your faith in this because listen, this is powerful stuff. And so we begin to do that. We begin to pray and fast. And, and listen, I was working construction and doing youth ministry at the same time. So listen, I had some hard days. I was roofing houses, framing houses, but I knew in my spirit that I, I, I didn't just want, but I was desperate for my parents to know Jesus Christ, Amen. right? I was desperate for that. This is what I wanted. This is what I longed for. And so we pushed through this thing. We kept, we prayed and we fast. And it, it's, it's so neat because it, I don't remember the exact dates. I probably should have wrote it down, but my parents gave their hearts to the Lord. Amen. That year. And then it was like one month later, we found out Rhonda was pregnant. So, so I'm just trying to show you guys that it's powerful. Prayer and fasting is powerful. So let's jump into this. Go to Joel chapter two, starting with verse 12. Joel 2, verse 12. It says this, Even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all of your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love. And he relents from sending calamity. He knows he may turn and relent and leave behind a blessing, a grain offering, drink offerings for the Lord your God. It says, blow the trumpet in Zion, declare a holy fast, call a sacred assembly, gather the people, consecrate the assembly, bring together the elders, gather the children, those nursing, let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her chamber. And so here in this, in the book of Joel, I I was just trying to think of some scriptures that dealt with corporate fast. And this is a corporate fast right here with Joel. You know, it says for everybody, everybody say everybody. It said, bring everybody. It it didn't even exclude children. It said, bring everybody and let's call a sacred fast. Every single person. And and, and so the first thing I wanna say is now that I said that, I really do want you to come back to church the rest of the month. (laughs) You know, don't be afraid. We're gonna talk about some stuff here in a little bit. But it said for everybody to fast. And the second thing I think is so powerful out of this passage is who called the fast? Who called this fast? I think before when I read this, I was like, well, obviously it was Joel, but it wasn't Joel. It says that the Lord called the fast. He says, he says, rend your hearts to me, return to me with fasting and weeping. This was coming straight from the mouth of God, straight from God's mouth. You know, Pastor Keenan got up and, and preached an awesome message last week about fasting and, and said we're gonna do this corporate thing. And, you know, some of us were like, well, I like last week when you talked about blessings and favor and honor, but, you know, this week, I don't know if you're really hearing from God, <laughs> right? <laughs> but what I want you guys to understand is as a staff, we've really been praying and seeking God. And this wasn't something that we just said, hey, maybe we should try to fast this year. No, God said to fast. He said to call a sacred assembly to bring everybody to me and we need to fast and pray for this year. That makes a big difference, right? 
That's a big difference between somebody, a, a man saying this is what you should do. No, God's saying to fast. He's saying this is what Crosby Church is called to do. This is what we are supposed to be a part of. I don't know about you, but I wanna partner with what God's doing. And this is our chance for that. You know, I think about the walls of Jericho, you know, uh, God speaks to Joshua and he says, listen, this is what I want you guys to do. I want you guys to go, I want you to march around the city, then I want you to do it for seven days, and I want you to do it seven times, and I want you to blow a trumpet, and you know, then all these cool things are gonna happen, you're gonna take over the place. And you know, as you read through those passages, it's so cool that because in none of that, you don't ever see anybody complaining. Like, really? Like, God, couldn't we just go right in? Aren't you bigger than that? Couldn't, we, couldn't you just go ahead and wipe out the walls and let us go do what we wanna do? You know, nobody complained. They just took what Joshua said, and they did it. They took what Joshua said and they did it. You know why? Because they knew it came from God. And they knew that there was, there was a lot of skin in the game and they seen Joshua and they saw how the Lord operated through him. So I'm just trying to, uh, to tell you guys this morning that it is time for Crosby Church to fast and there's a reason for it. God has something big coming. God has something huge coming our way. I think it was in December sometime, I was just walking our property and I was just praying and I was weeping before the Lord. I came into our sanctuary. I I remember going up in there and sitting and just praying and praying for the glory of the Lord to fill this place. And, And I just felt God's presence so strong. And if I could speak just a little prophetically to you this morning, I felt so strong in my spirit that the God said that this is gonna be a big year. He said, how many of you want that? You guys want that? Good. I felt like the Lord said, this is gonna be a a big year for Crosby Church if you fast. He said, if you fast and if you pray. He said, this could could be a a big year for you guys and and not just a big year, but I'm believing as we fast and pray that we're gonna be a history-making church. How do you guys feel about that? who, who Who wants to make history? See what, see, what I'm believing is, is as we fast and we pray and we seek God, that as we move into the New Year's, that, man, God does so much that he is the headline in Crosby. But he says, if you fast, if you fast. Isaiah 54, you know, I... I was just praying and this is one of the scriptures that came to my mind. You know, there's no fasting in this scripture, but it fits to where we're at. And it, and it was so cool because, you know, I, I remember this is the scripture up on our wall over there. Over there. <laughs> I knew it was somewhere in here. But it says this, it says, enlarge the place of your tent. It says to enlarge the place of your tent, stretch your tent curtains wide. It says, do not hold back, lengthen your cords, strengthen your stakes, for you will spread out to the right and to the left. Your descendants will dispose nations and settle in their desolate cities. Listen, this scripture is telling us that we need to to stretch out, we need to enlarge because God's about to do something, right? God's about to do something, it's on our wall, so it, it makes sense. We put it on the wall. God's going to do something, but what I wanna show you guys in this scripture passage is you know, God says in verse three what he's gonna do, but he said in verse two what we need to do. He, he, didn't, he didn't start off and say, hey, listen, Crosby Church, I'm gonna do this, 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 and this, and this. Oh yeah, and I'm also gonna do this. And man, you're gonna be so excited about everything I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna do. You're gonna be jacked up and you're gonna go fast and pray. No, God says fast and pray. And then this is gonna be the biggest year that your church has ever seen. See, see what God's trying to say is it's, it's going to take some work. He says, you need to strengthen, you need to spread out, you need to do something. And the thing I love about this scripture that correlates with fasting is what God's talking about is making room. He says to make room. I'm like, God, that's real cool. We need to make room for people. I'm like, we already got a big church here. We got open seats. You know, he says, make room for me. That's what fasting does is it makes room for God. He says, make room for me. And then guess what? Then I'll make some room for people. 
but he needs us first and foremost to stretch ourselves out, to go further than we ever thought we could possibly go, do more than we've ever thought that we could possibly do. And he says, do that, fill me in that gap and then watch what I'll do with you and your church. And, and I want you guys to understand that this is, this is a corporate fast, but man, this is your fast. This is, this is more than just us as a body. This is you individually and what God is wanting to do in your life and through your life. And so in order for God to do these things, he first says, listen, you gotta do some work. You gotta do some things. If you have faith, you need to put some faith to your feet, right? We can also look at that in 2 Chronicles 7, 14. It says this, we've all heard this pastor used it last week. It says, for if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. How many of you like algebra? Nobody raise your hand, don't do it. We don't like algebra. Come on, man, you don't know how to do algebra. <laughs> so you should be over there. <laughs> Too much fun. So the scripture basically says, if equals then. If equals then. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, seek their face, repent and turn from their wicked ways, God says, then I will heal their land. See, I'm just trying to set this foundation to show you guys that number one, God's calling us to fast. And number two, it's imperative to what God wants to do this year. He wants to do some big things, but if equals then. When I read through the scripture, to me, this is all about fasting. Even though it doesn't say fasting, you know, it says humble, seek, pray, and repent. Man, this is what fasting is all about. This is what it's all about. And I don't know about you guys, but I want God to hear me this year. I, I, I want God to hear me. You know why my parents gave their hearts to Jesus? It's because God heard my prayers. He heard my desperation. He heard what I needed. He heard it. Because that's what these things do is they bring us to a place to where God can hear us. This is what fasting is all about. If, if equals then. And so let's do this. Let's take a minute and let's just talk about fasting. Let's talk about fasting for a minute. Like we said, today is our first day of our 21 day fast. And uh, the first thing I wanna say before I say anything about fasting, uh, you know, me and Rhonda were even talking about this on the way over here, is did you know that your body was created to fast? It was, some of you are looking at me like, uh-uh. <laughs> no, it wasn't. <laughs> like I'm supposed to eat. Listen, I know some of us might have medical issues or, or different things, but if God says when you fast and he's the one that created us, don't you think he created us to be able to fast, right? And so I don't want you to get intimidated as we begin to talk about fasting because listen, this is, this is something that every single one of us can do. This is something that we can all participate in. We are all children of God. We are all created by the same person and he's given us all the ability to participate in this in some shape or form, right? So you can do this. That's my first thing is you can do it. You can fast. But we're, we're calling this 21 day fast and, and I want you to kind of see our vision and our goal in it uh, before we move into the rest of the word because uh, I think, you know, I, I wish that every single one of us could, you know, just fast for 21 days. But I know that that, so, like I said, some of us just can't do that because of medical reasons or different things. But I think one of our biggest visions and goals for this is that at least that you do whatever you can and that for 21 days, that every single day on the calendar is covered in fasting and prayer. That every single day, every single day is covered. But I, I want you to be able to do what you can and as much as you can. And we also need to remember while we do this, that we're a team, right? Like we're, we're a team in this. We're, we're in this together and we're all going, I knew that wasn't gonna work when I did it. <laughs> like I even wrote it in my notes, like laugh out loud. Because when pastor says it, we all say it, we're all going, yes. 
We're all going the same way. We're all going the same direction, right? We're all in this thing together. So, so, so in that, we're gonna help each other in this. We're gonna fast together and we're gonna fast individually, right? And, and just let me go ahead and make this point while I'm in that area. Listen, this time of fasting and prayer, this isn't, this isn't a competition. This isn't a, a spiritual thermometer to say how spiritual you are. This isn't what this isn't about. This isn't a comparison thing. We're not here to compare each other and say, well, I'm fasting this and so-and-so's only doing this. I must be closer to God. This, listen, this fast this year and what I'm declaring isn't a determination of how close you are to God, but how close you will get to God. Okay, so it doesn't matter if, you, if you're here to hear to God up to there or if you're already up to here, you're gonna be in his face by the time this fast is over and then God's gonna be able to do so much stuff in your life. So fasting, we're a team, we're doing this thing together, we're covering all 21 days. So this is what fasting is. A fast is to abstain from all or some foods or drink and replacing that time with prayer and seeking God. It's abstaining from all foods or sometimes you drink and taking that time to seek God, right? This is, this is the definition on Google of what fasting is, to abstain from food. All right, there's different kinds of fasts. There's, there's different ways that you can do this. I'm gonna go over a couple just so that you can have a, a few ideas. But the first thing is there's an absolute fast, an absolute fast. Exodus chapter 34, 28 says this, Moses was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights without eating bread or drinking water. And he wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments, right? So this is a supernatural fast. God, I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and say right now that God isn't calling us to a supernatural fast right now right? At least he's not me, he might you, right? Somebody said no. <laughs> Listen, my, my biggest thing is this, is pray and ask God what he wants you to do. If he, if he wants you to do this, then that's great. He's not asking me to do it. <laughs> but this is a supernatural fast. This is something that you cannot do without the supernatural power of God. You, I said our bodies are made to fast, but I don't think they're made for 40 days without food or water, right? We need something to come in, in us. And so this is supernatural. It's just like Jesus, when he was in the desert, you know, he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights without anything. Supernatural, supernatural fast of God. The second thing is there's just a normal fast. Acts chapter 10, verse 30 says, Cornelius answered, three days ago, I was in my house praying at this hour. At three in the afternoon, suddenly a man shining with clothes stood before me. Judges 10, 26. It says, then all the Israelites, the whole army went up to Bethel and there they sat weeping before the Lord. They fasted the day until evening and presented burnt offerings and fellowship offerings to the Lord. And so this is, this is just a normal fast. And, and the thing about this fast and I think is so cool is, you know, it, it's saying to abstain from food and drink, but it's not for like 40 days, right? And, and so, you know, with doing a 21 day fast, I would even think that that would be kind of hard to go without anything for 21 days in our bodies to really get what it needs to get. But you know, that's something that you can maybe do two or three days out of the week. You can maybe do a one day fast with no food or no water. And then maybe the next day eat fruits and vegetables. You know, you can mix it up. You can do different things. I, I think the, the biggest thing that I would want you to know is, you know, there's no rule book to this. You know, this isn't a democracy. We're not telling you this is what you have to do. But I will tell you that the greatest the sacrifice, the greater the reward in your life. And that's why it's, uh, I'm saying that this is a corporate thing, but I'm also saying this is an individual thing because listen, you need to determine in your heart how much you wanna get out of this. And then you start to put together what kind of fast you wanna do. And so there, number three, there's a, a partial fast. And this can be a fast of pleasurable food, sugar, just eating fruits and vegetables, drinking water, right? In Daniel 1, 8, it says, but Daniel resolved not to defile himself with royal food and wine. And he asked the chief officials for permission not to defile himself this way. And, and so this is where we kind of get this fast. 
You know, this is probably the more common uh, fast that churches do. Some of the churches, if you read online, they do 21 day fast, they'll do a 21 day Daniel fast. They call it a Daniel fast. There's nowhere where it says that this is a Daniel fast, but you know, Daniel sought the Lord. He uh, actually, it said for 21 days, as he was doing this, that the angel of the Lord tried to get to Daniel, right? And it said, he told Daniel, he said halfway, the, the prince of Persia, who is Satan, stopped him. And he said, listen, I couldn't get there. I couldn't make it in time. But for 21 days, Daniel still sought the Lord. He still fasted. He still did all these things. And guess what? Then the word of the Lord was able to get to Daniel, right? And, and I think that's important because I don't know about you, but I'm ready to fight some darkness, Right? I'm ready to dispense some light. How many of you would re want to fight some darkness? You know, there's a spiritual battle going on and we have the opportunity in this as we're doing this. this is, we're, do, we're fasting for ourselves, we're fasting for our families. But listen, man, we are tearing up the devil while we're fasting and praying. He does not like it. And so Daniel, he's, he eats nothing but uh, fruits and vegetables, nuts, none of the choice foods, no meat, right? No meat. Some of you are getting the meat sweats right now. Like, whoa, what'd you say? No meat, just fruits and vegetables. Just fruits and vegetables. No meat. <laughs> no sodas. Oh, that hurt. To have no sugars, none of that stuff. This is a pretty obtainable fast. You know, this is something that I feel like most of us could probably do. I'm gonna tell you right now, if you drink a lot of sodas and a lot of coffee, the first three days is gonna be rough. You're gonna get that caffeine headache. But God's bigger than all of that, amen? God's bigger than every single bit of that. So there's the Daniel fast. There's, there's a, a whole bunch of other fasts. You know, there's a Jewish fast to where from a sunrise to sundown, you fast. You know, you don't eat anything for breakfast, lunch, and then for dinner, you eat. You know, there's, there's different kinds of fast, but the only way that it can be powerful and effective is, is, is when you thought you were gonna eat is if you spend that time seeking God. It, it's, it's, this isn't a diet. Some of us need it. <laughs> Ministry's been good to me. It's not a diet. It is beneficial to the body. We all have toxins, we all have these things that it's super beneficial but it's not just solely a diet. It's a time to give up, to sacrifice so that you can seek God with all of your heart, with everything that you are. You know, when I did that first fast, I didn't do it because I thought it would be fun or I just, this was something that God told me to do. And, and God's telling us to fast, but what I seek and, and pray over your lives is that would, God would give you specifically that this is what I need to do. This is what I need to give up. This is what I need to fast. And this is what I need to do for my church. So let me tell you what fasting is not. I think pastor covered a little bit of this last week. Fasting is not giving up bad habits, right? Fasting is not eating all the food you want, but stop smoking. You know, fasting is, is not eating all the food you want, but not drinking anymore. It, that's not what it is. I, I gave the definition earlier, it's, it's not eating. It's not eating. And I think sometimes as churches, we want, we want everybody to participate. And so we say, well, you know, you can just give up your phone for a little bit or, or this or that. No, it's not eating. Fasting, a true fast unto God is abstaining from food. So to say, oh, well, I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna do social media through January and you know, God's gonna pour out blessings on my life for that. No, it's not eating. It's not eating. I told the, the Huffman campus this morning, I would even encourage you as you're praying and fasting and as you're getting into the word of God, don't use your phone to do it. Get a real paper Bible because you're gonna get a text, you're gonna get a notification, you're gonna get stressed out, and then your 30 minute prayer time just went out the window and now you're hungry and you're mad and God didn't fill you with what you needed from heaven and you're like, why am I doing this? Because it has to be accompanied by prayer and it has to be accompanied by the things of God when you're doing this or it will be a challenge and it'll be difficult. And so to give up all those things, those are great things. I encourage us not to do those things, right? But I'm telling you, if we give up food and we replace that with prayer and fasting, then guess what? You're not gonna be on social media. 
You're not gonna be doing bad habits. I, I declare over this place that every bad habit is broken in the name of Jesus through this fast. Not because you're just not doing it for the 21 days, but because you get so close to God and to his presence that after the 21 days, you're like, man, I want more of this. I don't want any of that, right? And so it's a, a submission of our flesh, allowing the spirit to manifest in our lives. And then this will change everything else that we do. It'll change everything else we do. It'll set us on the right course and the right path for this coming year. Fasting will change all those things. Let me read this scripture to you. Matthew 26, 40 to 43 says, then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch for me for one hour? He asked Peter, watch and pray so you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And I want every single person to the sound of my voice to know that the spirit is willing. Your spirit is willing. Your flesh might be a little weak, but your spirit is always willing to do the things of God. So a couple of tips. Number one is this, make up your mind right now what you will do. Right now. <laughs> make up your mind right now what you're gonna do. And the reason I say that is because if you don't, then you're gonna find yourself not doing anything. You're gonna just walk into this and you're like, oh, you know, I'll, what happens? I'll just kind of go, no, don't do that. Make up your mind right now what you're gonna do. Daniel said, it said that he resolved, he purposed in his heart that this is what I'm doing. And this is what you have to do. You have to have this kind of mindset. Like, listen, I'm, I'm doing this. I'm all in. This is what I'm doing. Whatever it is that God puts on your heart to do, this is what I'm doing. And there's nothing that's gonna stop that. You gotta make up your mind. The second thing is this, and I feel like this is really important for everybody to know as you participate in this, at whatever level that you do, is that it starts off hard, but it gets easy, easier. It starts off hard. Listen, like I said, our bodies are addicted to things that you don't know you're addicted to. And when you stop putting those things in your body, your body screams, like, what are you doing to me? and you get headaches and you get tired, but then I'm gonna tell you after about four or five days, you start to feel really good. You're like, man, this, I have energy for five minutes, <laughs> but it's good energy. <laughs> it's really good energy, right? It feels good, your body feels clean, and then after a week, it's like, man, this, like I should have done this a long time ago, but I'm gonna tell you that at the beginning, it's, it's not easy. You're gonna go through some, a little bit of pain, but we need to do like Paul says, we need to beat our bodies. We need to put ourselves into submission to the things of God, because it will get easier. The third thing is this, you're not going to die. I'll just leave it at that. I think I felt before like I was gonna die when I was roofing at day 19. I'm like, Lord, I'm gonna die. This is it, I'm definitely getting closer to you. But as you can see, I'm still here. I didn't die. You're not gonna die. You, it's, it's 21 days. It's gonna come and it's gonna go, but the benefits are gonna be worth it. Number four is this. If you mess up, don't give up. And this is what I see happen a lot when people fast is they start off strong, they're gung-ho, and then, you know, somebody invited them over for dinner. What do you, what do you say? Like, no, I'm fasting. You get all spiritual. And then you go and you eat, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I've already messed up. I hope so-and-so is fasting because I'm done. I'm, I've messed up. That's, that's, that's not what God, listen, we, have, we serve a God of grace, right? And so you just keep pushing, you keep walking, you keep going forward, right? If you mess up, don't give up. I remember uh, when, when we were fasting for my mom and dad, you know, we were like two weeks into it, and this was a straight liquid fast, two weeks into it, and uh, my mom and dad came to church, and was like, yes, it's working, it's working. But then after church, they wanted to go to Subway. <laughs> really, you couldn't say McDonald's or like Subway. It smells like heaven. And so we're sitting there and I'm like, my dad kept looking at me. He's like, you sure you don't want food? Like they didn't go to church. They didn't know what was going on. They didn't know what we were doing. Are you sure you don't want food? But to this day, for the last six years, my dad does a 21 day fast. Amen. Amen. So listen, if you mess up, don't give up. Plan your fast. Number six, make sure, this is pretty important to know that you might not see the results while you're doing the fast. You might, you're not, some days you're gonna wake up and you don't feel like praying. 
And some days you're gonna wake up and it feels like, why am I doing this? Well, I'm gonna tell you the benefits and the, the results are worth it every single time. Make yourself a prayer list. You know, what we're doing is, is a corporate thing, but also understand that this is something that's also between you and God. This isn't something for us to go boast to people about like, look at me, this is what I'm doing. No, that's not what it's about at all. This is about humility. This is about sacrifice. And then you know what? God's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. We just, we just get that. So there's no reason to go boast or to brag about any of this. And so this is where I wanna get in. This is where I wanna close in is how this works and why this is gonna be such a big year for us. You guys ready for this? How it works and why this is gonna be so big. And so I begin to ask God for myself, what are we praying for? What am I seeking for? God, what is, what's going on? And I begin to think, you know, I can pray for vision, for ministry, all these different things are so good, they're all good. But God said this specifically, he said, all I want is you. He says, all I want is you. He says, all I want is you. And Luke chapter five, 34 to 35 says this, Jesus answered, can you make the friends of the bridegroom fast while he's with them? But the time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them. And in those days, he says, they'll fast. And so listen, what Jesus was saying to the Pharisees, he says, listen, I'm with them right now. I'm here with them. But listen, when I'm taken away, they're gonna fast. And the reason why they're gonna fast is because they're gonna be in this world, they're gonna become of this world, and there's gonna be walls built up between us. And listen, fasting and prayer is gonna break down every single brick. And so he says, listen, when, when I'm gone, I need you to fast because I need to be close to you. This is when you fast. And so God is speaking to us this morning. He's saying, listen, I think all the prayer requests are great. That's all good stuff. But what I really want is your heart. That's what God wants in every single one of you. He wants your heart. Vision, that's all good, but God wants your heart. In James chapter four, it says, come near to God and he'll come near to you. Come near to God. If you draw to him, guess what? He's gonna draw to you. And then why does that make things so big? Because guess what? Now he can, he can hear you and he can heal your land. Now you've made room so he can come in and then he can bring others in. But listen to this. We read it earlier. It says, even now declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord over Crosby Church this morning. This is why God has called us to fast. Even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all of your heart. This is Joel chapter two, we read it. How do we do this? With fasting and weeping. With fasting and weeping. He says, rend your hearts and you're not your garments. Return to the Lord your God for he is gracious, amen. He is gracious and he's compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love. And he, and, and he relents for us. He says, he says, listen, I'm declaring a fast because I want your heart to return to me. So the reason why that this is gonna be the biggest year that we've ever had is because this is the biggest thing that could ever happen. It's for us to rend our hearts to God and to get to close to God as we can possibly get. What does rend even mean? I had to look it up. It means to wring out. It means to get all that stuff out. It means to separate from. God, see what God is wanting from us through this fast and what you need to begin to be praying for is he wants you to take all the filth of your heart, all the things, all the junk that's in our hearts. The word says that our hearts are evil and they're deceitful and he wants you to begin to wring those things out and let all the junk of this world be poured out. And then the second thing he wants you to do is he wants you to take it and rip it from this world and give it to him. He wants us to rip it from this world and to give it to him. And so why fast? Why do we need to fast this year? Because listen, God wants to be closer to you this year than he's ever has been before. And through that, God's gonna do the biggest and the greatest things in your life. He's gonna fill this church building because we're so on fire for God that our hearts want God so much. Listen, we're not gonna develop programs. We're gonna be close to God and we're gonna fill this place. We're gonna make room, why? Because what we're doing, we're making room for him. We're making room for him. 
Listen, fasting is not to prove how much you love God, but it's to draw close to his love this year in 2019. Listen, don't try to prove yourself. This isn't about proving yourself. This is about you saying, I need Jesus. I need every single bit of him in my life. If Jonathan wants to come up, I'm gonna close. I need everything that he has for me. And as we draw close to him, like I said, the cool things about that is all the vision, the prayer request. God's gonna hold fast to his word and he's gonna do it. I said it earlier, the greater the sacrifice, the greater the reward. The more of yourself that you're willing to submit to God, the more he's gonna fill you. You need to take your tent, that is you. You need to stretch it. You need to lengthen your cords. You need to put some stakes in the ground and say, God, I'm ready. God, I'm ready for all that you have for me this year. Whatever that looks like. You might fast all 21 days. You might fast three days out of a week. But I'm gonna tell you, everybody in here can do something. And if not for the church, do it for yourself. This is your opportunity to draw close to God. This is not just something that I feel like God saying, this is the word of the Lord this morning. Rend your hearts, declares the Lord. Come to me with weeping and fasting. Return to me. The reason why God's gonna do big things is because this is the biggest thing. Everybody stand to your feet. So this is what I wanna do this morning is I'm gonna pray a blessing over us just for our fast, starting our fast out, getting ourselves where we need to be. But before we do that, I think we need to get ourselves where we need to be. I just prayed over this morning and the Lord said, this is a morning of repentance and a morning of returning to me. The best way to start this fast is your foot forward, moving towards God. And so we're just gonna open up the altar for a little bit. And I'm gonna give you opportunity, you know, just to come before the Lord in repentance. Listen, you might not even know what your sin is, but just go ahead and lay it at his feet anyways. You might not know what you're dealing with, but he knows what you're dealing with. Just take it to the feet of Jesus. But my challenge is to you is to come up here. You can kneel, you can stand and let's worship God and let's repent and let's declare as a church, as a body that we're doing this thing together and that we're returning to the Lord. All of our love returning to him. So Jonathan, you go ahead and sing. And if that's you, you need that, then you go ahead and come and you fill these altars up and begin to give it to the Lord.
We're going to uh, leave the altars open for a little bit. I'm going to pray over everybody. If you just want to stay in worship and seek God, I don't think of anything better to do while we're fasting. Uh, Pastor sent a message as, as the service is going over. He wants us to read it. So uh, it says, from Pastor, as Lori and I are watching the service this morning, we feel your prayers greatly. We love each of you so very deeply. One of the hardest things is being absent from being with you, but at the same time, we feel such great empowerment of the Holy Spirit in his presence. We are praying and seeking God's wisdom in this, which at times is far beyond our understanding. So we lean not on our own understanding, but we lean on the Lord and acknowledge him in everything. We love you all. Keep leaning in, keep pressing harder, keep believing further. Far past where you were, we together or have been. We will keep you posted. Please continue to cover us in your prayers as we cover each of you. I will see you soon, Pastor Keenan. Let's just go ahead and stretch our hands to heaven. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your presence. Father God, Lord, we just thank you so much for this time that we're in. God, I thank you that even though it may seem challenging, God, that you're bringing us into a season God, to where we're gonna be closer to you than we've ever been. Father God, Lord, I lift up every single person in here today, God. I pray, Father, that we would all come to you in repentance, God. God, that we would wholly give ourselves to you. God, I pray for surrender over this place right now in Jesus' name. God, we come to you and God, we say sorry for all the times that we put things in front of you. God, we repent for all the, the walls that we've built in front of us to you. But God, we declare and decree, God, that this year that you're gonna break every single wall down. God, that you're gonna stretch us, that you're gonna pull on us, God, so that we would allow more of you, God, into our lives, so that we can allow more of you into this church, so that we can allow more in you into this world. We just thank you for it, God. Father, I pray a blessing over every single person, God. Give them wisdom as they fast, God. Speak to them specifically, God, what they're supposed to fast. God, I pray that we would band together as your army, God, and we would fight the darknesses of hell. And God, that we would see you do more than you can, we can even ask or imagine, God, this year. Oh, we love you so much, Jesus. We thank you for healing our pastor. We thank you that your presence is with him. And God, we just lift it all to you, Lord. It's in Jesus' name I pray and everybody said, yeah. amen. Listen, we love you guys. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, if you have any questions or need to talk to anybody about fasting, I'm more than welcome. We're, we're happy to talk to you. We're leaving the altars open. We'll play worship for a little bit if you want to stay and worship. We love you guys so much.